Plasterboard is a panel made of gypsum sandwiched between two layers of paper, used in the construction of interior walls and ceilings to provide fire, sound, thermal, moisture, and impact resistance that offer aesthetic values, comfort and safety for buildings. So, what is gypsum? It is the raw material of plasterboard. Its formula contains calcium, sulfate and dihydrate. Gypsum has many environmental qualities. For instance, it is a sustainable material, fire resistant, it contains no hazardous substances and the most important, it is infinitely recyclable. The natural gypsum is a mineral rock embedded in the ground that is obtained from natural quarries. Or it can be recycled from the waste chain system. The life cycle of plasterboard is well defined and has reached its maximum efficiency in Europe. Nevertheless, possible innovative actions can be carried out in order to reduce some of the plasterboard impacts along its life cycle. Raw materials. Quarries restoration and preservation of natural resources. Manufacturing. Optimize energy use and promotion of renewable energy when cost effective. Logistics. Rely on local manufacturing facilities to ensure that materials are produced as close as possible to the end user. Installation. Customized panels to decrease the amount of waste generated at the installation site. Building lifetime, improve and guarantee the quality of its properties. End of life, designed to deconstruct for safety and higher recovery of material. Knowing that the circular economy is based on these three principles. 1. Design out waste and pollution. 2. Keep products and materials in use. 3. Regenerate natural systems. In this case study, collaboration and shared responsibility among the different stakeholders is needed if we want to achieve a circular economy for plasterboard. For making plasterboard more circular, several issues and opportunities should be faced. These approaches could help to improve the life cycle of plasterboard and make it more circular. Promotion of a dismantling culture. This will make it easier to separate the waste. And demolition should be seen as the latter option. The landfill costs must be higher than the recycling fees. The demolisher will choose the recycling route. Then, the recyclers will recycle more plasterboard waste, and the manufacturers will reincorporate more of this waste in the production chain. The created loop is obvious. Recycled gypsum can be close and open loop. The material will have an added value if an end of waste status is obtained. Quality criteria is compulsory. This leads us to the necessity of specifications for the recyclable gypsum waste and for the recycled gypsum. The inefficiencies of the recycling market must be sorted out. We are talking about price costs in secondary material markets, consumption and technological externalities, etc. Moreover, regulations are needed for establishing a minimum content of recycled gypsum in the panels. Besides, it is necessary to differentiate between recycled and synthetic gypsum since there are times in which the origin is not specified. And finally, new approaches can be searched for compatible uses of recycled gypsum and plaster, like in agriculture or interior design. The following infographic shows the same previous ideas. Check it out. For more information, check the following sites.